Tube Nation, I'm Sam here again with the Baron of Bee Books, and today I am so excited to bring to you an October Halloween spooky book recommendation. So today I'm wearing my Maleficent shirt in honor of my Halloween videos because she is by far my favorite villain. So I absolutely love this time of year. Fall is my favorite season as it is with a lot of readers I find. Um, I'm originally from New England so I grew up with many a cold fall with hay rides and apple cider and pumpkins and, um, and now I live in a warmer climate so I tend to bring fall inside with me. Um, I hope you like my fall display for this time of year. I'm really enjoying my my fall so far this year and I wanted to go ahead and share with you just some of my overall favorite Halloween reads books that I would recommend around this time of year just as a side note I am a huge chicken so a lot of the books I read aren't particularly scary they just fit with the fall vibe and will definitely get you in the mood for this time of year I wanted to include some different levels of reading and some different genres so the first one I would like to talk about is the Jumbies and this I read earlier this year I really enjoyed that book it was um, I tend to really like middle grade um, like the Harry Potter kind of age range of like the first three books you know um, it was really great it is based on um, Caribbean myth and folklore and was just a really beautiful story about a young girl who is experiencing some spooky things on the island and it shows her and how she overcomes these challenges and it has a lot to do with family and friendship and I thought it was just a really beautiful story. And that is by Tracy Baptiste. The next book I want to talk about I think also falls in kind of the middle grade um, reading age. However, I would say this is a little bit older than The Jumbies and that's Neil Gaiman's The Graveyard Book. I read this a few years ago and absolutely loved it. Um, this copy in particular, this is with illustrations by Dave McKean and this one is just really nice. I'll show you one of those illustrations. Um, and this is just an enjoyable book. It starts off kind of uh, brutally, a uh, little boy, and it's not a spoiler, it happens like in the very beginning of the, of the book, but he loses his family and he ends up being raised by ghosts. And the interesting part for me in reading the book was the character development of all the ghosts in the graveyard and um, learning their backstories. And it's just another wonderful tale of a uh, family family and of course this isn't a traditional family um, but family and all its different forms and what that can mean and um, how the ghosts help raise the young boy and it takes place in a graveyard and it's mostly about ghosts <laughs> so that definitely fits in with this time of year and I would highly recommend this is probably um, out of all these types of books probably my favorite okay next um, is Ray Bradbury's The Halloween Tree. And I would say this one is more in line with kind of the Jumbies with the middle grade age group. This one in particular um, reminds me a lot, if anyone, I grew up in the 80s, if anyone is like me and loves The Goonies, which was a wonderful movie that came out back then. And um, it also reminds me of Stranger Things because it's definitely like the squad goals. But this is basically just about a group of friends and the shenanigans they get up, uh, they get into on Halloween night. They end up um, traveling through time. There's some mentions of Egypt in here. And you know, there's the creepy house with the creepy man. And of course, the beautiful imagery of the Halloween tree. Um, and if anyone else are uh, Disney fans, I believe this time of year at one of the Disney parks that um, Ray Bradbury was kind of involved in Disney and there's, um, 
uh, they pay homage to him with the Halloween tree. Now, I'm not 100% sure if that's shown at the Magic Kingdom in Orlando or at the one in um, California, but um, it's kind of neat to see it brought to life. Next, in a completely different um, kind of uh, angle, is a YA book, and this is Wink Poppy Midnight. And um, I was between this and one other one, but I decided to go with this one because I haven't really talked about this one on my channel yet. This book can be very dividing. Most people either love this book or they don't care for it very much at all, which is kind of why I was nervous to recommend it, but I absolutely love it, so I thought it deserved a mention. And this book is just really strange. It's very oddly written. Um, it's written almost like a fairy tale. So if you can get into like, the odd and the twisted and not get super close to your characters. Um, if you like fairy tales and can avoid that particular character development that sometimes fairy tales have where it's more just about the story or the moral, then I think you would really enjoy this. It's very dark. It's, it's very, like I said, you feel distanced from the characters, but I think, and though I don't always enjoy that, I think it really works with this story. Um, there's a, a dark and creepy setting at one point in this book, and it's kind of one of those books that always keeps you wondering, like, what is really going on here? Um, there's some uh, disturbing relationships that happened in this, uh, and you don't really know, you don't really know what the motivations are for the characters. It's a quick read, and if you like any of those types of things, I would definitely say to give it a try. Plus, I mean, you know, cover love. I mean, it's beautiful, so there's that. And finally, I had to include a classic, and my favorite classic to read this time of year is The Legend of Sleepy Hollow by Washington Irving. I, when I first read this, I was so in love with the language. Words are magic, and Irving knows how to stir the pot. It's beautifully written. If you're not someone that's used to classics, I would say it's accessible mostly because of the length. It is a short book, but the language is definitely different than what we're accustomed to today, of course. So um, it may seem a little cumbersome as far as that's involved, but it is beautiful and the setting for this book is absolutely spectacular. Um, it doesn't get much better than the image of the Headless Horseman for this time of year. Um, and again, if you're a Disney person, um, the Headless Horseman does make uh, an appearance in the parade at uh, Walt Disney World. So, um, but anyway, I love this story and I plan to continue reading it in the future. So, those are my fall Halloween recommendations. I tried to pick something for everybody. I hope that there's something here that you find enjoyable. Um, if you plan on picking any of these up or if you've read them and you wanna to talk to me about them, please feel free to go ahead and leave a comment down below. I hope that you've liked what you had to see here today. Please go ahead and click the subscribe button and select the bell button to get notified when I post new videos. I hope that everyone's having a wonderful Halloween season and I look forward to seeing everyone soon. Thanks for being here with me today. Farewell for now. Bye-bye.